Welcome, welcome family. It's that time again where we sit around the table and share the word of God. And I just want to take this time and welcome you all wonderful viewers, um, MTW family and um, all my wonderful viewers from all over uh, South Africa and the world. You know, I was so encouraged today when I spoke to one of my brothers in, in London and he said, hey, your, your, your messages are encouraging us. Um, it also encourages me to hear that and uh, just want to say thank you so very much also for sharing these videos because as you do you're touching somebody you're encouraging somebody and i want to thank you also very much for all the watch parties that are going on and i want to say thank you so very much i saw pastor davidson thank you for that watch party i really appreciate and uh, of course thank you men of god that are supporting us so that together we we share the word and we spread the gospel and also uh, uh, your messages that you're sharing also on on your live streaming i really appreciate they in they enrich us they encourage us and uh, i want to take this time and welcome you all and remind you our theme for this season peace in the midst of the storm peace in the midst of the storm we just want to thank god also for uh, the, the 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 address by the president yesterday which uh, really shows how our, our our nation our leadership cares for its people and i would love to take this few minutes and say to us as south africans please let us um, stand by our government and let us make sure that uh, we fight the spread of this pandemic because honestly government is going all out to try and protect its people and to try to help us out of this uh, uh, lockdown uh, uh, by, by really arresting the spread of the virus. But it is upon you, it is upon me. Let us therefore also respond in that way and, and make sure that uh, we, we join our hands, we join our hearts to deal with this pandemic. Thank you so very much, South Africa. Thank you so very much, uh, Africa, for us waking up and really standing and fighting this pandemic. You remember our theme in Mark chapter number four. Jesus said, when the evening came, let us cross over to the other side. And I want to say to us South Africans, I want to say to us Africans, I want to say to us world, in this evening that has befallen us, let us cross over to the other side. And let us take the Lord with us. Let us let it be the time of prayer, the time to seek the face of God, and the time to encourage each other through the word of God. Tonight, I want us to talk about something very much important. My title is, Keep Your Heart With All Diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. You know, this is a portion of a scripture in the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs of, of Solomon, chapter number four and verse 23, where he said, above all things, guard or keep or protect your heart for it is a wellspring of life. It is a wellspring of life. Above all things, guard or keep, protect your heart for it is a wellspring of life. That's Proverbs chapter number four and verse 23. You see, the heart is an extreme, uh, an extremely valuable, valuable part of ourselves. Uh, under normal circumstances, as people, we don't guard, we don't protect things that are worthless, things that are valueless, but the things that are become treasures, we value it, we protect it with all that we can. Now, the reason we say the heart is so valuable is because everything in our lives comes from the heart. If our hearts are pure, then our lives will be pure. If our hearts are impure, then our lives will be impure. That is how sensitive and how important it is. Uh, what you put uh, into your heart determines uh, how your life will come out. You know, my life, it's, a, it's an outflow of what fills my heart. You, can have, you cannot have wrong things filling your heart and have good things showing out in your life. And you cannot have good things filling your heart and then uh, live or show out a life that is wrong. So it's very much important because what, what you have in your heart determines your life, determines um, how you live your life. In fact, it becomes the treasure from which everything flows out, everything uh, begins to manifest. So that is why we're talking about, look, uh, of all things, keep your heart with all diligence. But, you know, it is my desire in these sessions to also simplify some of these things because, because when we talk of the heart, exactly what is the heart? You see, if, 
out of the heart comes the issues of life what exactly is the heart in the english when we talk of the heart we talk or in the english language when we talk of the heart we talk of emotions and feelings that's when we talk of the heart but in the bible when we talk of the heart it is more than just emotions and feelings it, it it's more because um, it also includes the deepest inward moral and spiritual condition in what deep inward moral and spiritual condition so it has got it has got our emotions of course it has got our feelings but it has got this deepest inward moral and spiritual uh, uh, convictions and in other ways i can say you know it, when we talk of the heart it is the center of the moral and spiritual lives um, uh, as the bible uh, uh, says it but i can even say it's it's the seed of our spirit our soul you know our emotions that is the core of self you know it's not easy to say this is the heart that is why you cannot say the heart of man is the spirit neither can you say the heart of man is the soul you know it's a combination is the is the core is an outflow it's a collection of the core of your humanity and it shows out in your lives or it shows out in what you do or it show it shows out in your behavior that is why we say of all things keep protect uh, guard you know different uh, versions of the Bible will say either keep or protect or guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life your life flows from that center and one thing that uh, I want you to see more especially uh, uh, when we look at Proverbs chapter 4 when we look at the context of that scripture we realize that it's a father talking to his son and uh, you see even in the in, in the very first chapter of uh, Proverbs I think it's verse number 8 you know where uh, the father is addressing his son so even here it is a father addressing the son you know and uh, uh, that that is the convert, conversation and he says to his son you see the condition of your heart determines your future determines your 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 life when it comes to ministry if you are a minister of the gospel it determines your life as a family it determines how your family how your ministry how your business is gonna come out did you know that even your business takes after yourself you know it takes your nature it it, it looks like you and it acts and behaves like yourself so that is very much important for us to understand that a father is sitting here with a son and saying, my son, of all the things that you can keep, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Because if the heart, you know, is corrupted or the heart is evil or the heart is contaminated, then we will see it and it will show out through your life. So that is why it's the, is that which you keep the most, is that which you protect the most. You know, if we're talking of the heart as a physical organ, you know how the heart is very much important because it pumps blood, you know, quite a number of, uh, of liters and hundreds and thousands of liters that it pumps every day. And when it stops, everything stops. So, you know, when we talk of your core also, your core is what pumps life every day pumps life into action, pump, pumps life into whatever you say with your mouth. It comes from the heart. Now, when we realize and see that when we talk of the heart, this is what we are talking about. We have uh, established that the heart is not just this organ and it's not just um, the mind, but the heart is the core of humanity. It's the spirit, it's the soul, it's the emotions, it's the feelings, it's everything, it's the center of our moral and spiritual uh, 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 selves. So because of that, I want us to look at something that becomes very much important because our lives manifest exactly that. Our lives gives out, our lives show out exactly that. And remember, the Father says, keep your heart with all diligence. I want us to read in the book of Matthew chapter number 12 and verse 34 to 35. Jesus here is talking to the Pharisees, you know, um, the Pharisees are complaining after he had healed somebody, he has cast out a devil. They say, no, he cast out demons by Belzebub, the prince of demons. And Jesus rebukes them. Listen to what he says. He says, you generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? You see, how can you being evil speak good things? You brood of vipers. So he says, 
How can you, being evil in the heart, speak good things? So an evil heart cannot speak good things. And then he goes on to say, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the mouth takes from the abundance of the heart that core of self. So whatever a person says does not just come, but it comes from the, the person himself. It comes from the inner uh, 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 self of that person. Now it goes on to say, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. You see? So when I listen to somebody's words, you can feel and you can hear goodness. And when you hear that, that is what fills that person's heart. You know, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. So an evil man also, that is why, you know, people like uh, people who are, are, um, are so corrupt in their conversation or in their speech, uh, they, they always uh, use swear words and all that. You know what? It's like they've written it down. It's like they, 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 they've rehearsed it. Why? Because it's full inside. When they open their mouth, it just flows. So it says, out of the good treasure of the heart, the mouth speak. Out of the evil treasure of the heart, the mouth speak. So we see what is in you by what comes out of your mouth. You show it out through your mouth. Now, let's then talk about keep your heart with all diligence. Because having seen that, having realized that, you know, what comes out of my mouth is what is in my heart. Therefore, I cannot be able to stop what is already in my mouth, but I can stop what is in my heart. I cannot change what is in my mouth, but I can change what is in my heart. You see, I can deal with what is in my heart. Having seen that, uh, you know, my heart, it's, uh, it's, 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 in, it's influencing everything. And it is about uh, moral, spiritual, emotional feelings and everything. You know, then I must deal with those things right in the heart. It's, it's exactly what uh, 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 Shakespeare said. I must destroy the serpent in the egg, you know. I must deal with it at, at its formative stage, you know. The heart is literally a well, if I may put it that way. It's literally a well, you know, and out of it flows whatever is in it. it and that is, might be death or life. If there is death, if there is poison, out of this well flows poison. But if it is good, if it is life, out of this well flows life. That's exactly what the heart is. It, it, that's why when we read in Second Kings chapter number 4 and verse 40 to... to, to, to uh, 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 yeah, I think it's yeah, First King, Second Kings chapter four and verse forty. You know, here are the, uh, the sons of the prophets or the the students, uh, the prophetic school. Listen to what it, what they say here. The stew was poured out of for for the men, but as they began to eat it, they cried out, "Men of God, there is death in the pot," and they could not eat it. Elisha said get some flour he put it into the pot and said serve it to the people to eat and there was nothing harmful in the pot now you know the story here food is prepared but while they, they were dishing they found that there was poison in the food and they cried out to the men of god and they said hey there's poison in the pot you know there's poison or there's death in the pot now when there's death in the pot that means whoever eats from the pot then he has eaten death he has eaten that poison now when he said when they said that he took flour put it in and healed or diffused the poison and gave people to eat that is to say you know what let's diffuse the poison let's destroy the power of the poison while it's still in the pot before it is consumed by people and when we destroy it in the pot then we know the entire pot is safe that is why you know the rot of humanity today is from the heart what people do today is so is so scary so outrageous because even during this lockdown uh, 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 season and uh, with all what government is trying to do but there are officials that goes all out to steal can you imagine that to do uh, to, food is given or food parcels are given and somebody just takes them just like that and that is that shows 
the rot of the heart that shows corruption how do you steal in a time like this how do you take for from the poor from those that you know that meal would mean everything to them and you you steal you you you, you take it just like that and all reports of corruption that are happening uh, through people that are at work people that will earn a, a salary people that has an income one thing that causes corruption in our world today and uh, in our in our nation and even uh, in, in in the continent itself it's the rot of the heart it's not lack of money no it's not because people are poor no corruption does not necessarily mean you are poor it, it, it it's the rot of the heart when somebody it's rotten inside whatever they do they do those silly things because it is a hard thing and these things i must be honest with you we don't lack like it or we don't we, we we don't run short of rotten hearts and corrupt hearts some of them we even see it in church you know today there are churches that are started from the heart of rottenness where people are robbed where all sorts of things are done why because you know what it's not the face it's not it does not even care that you hold the bible but it's a hard thing and sometimes people become so gullible because they think this is a man of god this is a woman of god but there's decay in the heart there's poison in the pot so that's that that's our biggest problem that's our biggest challenge you know and that is what uh, when we talk of the heart and what flows out of the heart that's what we're talking about and i want to encourage you friends to know that this is what we must keep this is what we must guard their heart you know that is why let us look now at uh, 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 how we can guard this heart because once the heart is poisoned or contaminated whatever comes out of it is corrupted is dirty is, is dangerous uh, that is why um, you know it's 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 scary how people even kill others how people even um, amputate people you know harvest people's organs while they are still alive that's when your heart is rotten to the core dead you know you are so dangerous to yourself you're so dangerous to humanity so when we say let us keep our hearts let us protect our hearts one other very important thing i want you to know this is a personal thing it's, it's a personal thing we're talking about even if you have a lot of money you cannot hire somebody to keep your heart for you you have to keep your heart for yourself you know it's a personal thing it's like somebody who has money and say i'll just employ somebody to go to the gym for me you know what that person may go to the gym and exercise but it won't help you with anything because it's a personal thing they are the ones that are going to benefit but you're not going to benefit you have to do it for yourself so when we talk about keeping your heart i must keep my heart my wife must keep my heart my children must keep their hearts you must keep your heart all of us keep your heart with all diligence for out of it will flow your life you will you will be exactly what your heart is that is why um you know uh, there's this saying of saying uh, your gift can lift you so high but it's your character that is going to keep you there you know that will keep you up there and in, in Nigerian I love how they put it in Nigerian uh, Nigerians they say if your reputation and your character will meet in the dark will they recognize each other you know your reputation and your character if they meet in the dark can they recognize each other trying to say you know what you have got this reputation yeah people esteem you very high but you you know what your character is so bad you are just uh, something else to understand that when your reputation and your character meet they will not recognize each other and that is very very much important for us to make sure that my reputation and my character must meet you know uh, because one day if i don't align my 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 my, my character to my reputation it's only one day it will pull everything down and i'll be down there now how do i keep my heart two three things um about f f four or five things in, in in keeping your heart number one be careful of the words that you speak and the words that is you hear in order for you to keep your heart be careful of the words that you speak and the words that you hear number two be careful of the thoughts that you cherish the kind of thoughts that you cherish these words that you speak they go deep to the heart these words that you hear 
they, they go deep and settle in the heart and they 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 coil they fashion they they mold your heart and these thoughts that you cherish they they they, they sink into the heart you know yeah it, if i may put it you know the heart is also like the subconscious mind but you know things lie low right in you again uh, be careful of what you eat when it comes to information what is your in, your source of information what is it that you're consuming every day to keep your heart be careful of what you eat and be careful of your company your company talking about your association be careful of your you know in fact be intentional with your association that is why they say the company of fools uh, you, when you, you you are in the company of fools you become one you know and, and that's very true uh, bad company corrupts good morals and finally be careful of yourself that one is a heavy one be careful of yourself because many people your worst enemy is yourself you know, you are the one who drag yourself to the mud. You are the one who drag yourself to all sorts of things that are useless. Now, let us quickly look at being careful of the of your words and the words of other people. Many people take words for granted, but those are those who take words uh, casually. They end up being casualties. Words are very dangerous. Words are very very dangerous. Words are like I said the other day that. They, 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 they are carriers, you know, they are carriers of life and death. They are containers. They carry life or death. I must be very on, honest with you. Many people are dead today and some people are behind bars because of words. Many people suffer depression and are into mental institutions because of words. Words that came from themselves and words that came from other people. Words kills and destroy people's future. They, words even destroys people's hopes, destroys even people's confidence every day. Unfortunately, many inject themselves with this poison of words. You know, people just injecting themselves with such poison of words. The scripture in Proverbs 18, 20, you know, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's how dangerous words can be. So when you want to keep your heart with diligence or when you vigilantly and diligently keep, protect, guard your heart, you must be careful of the ways that you speak and the ways that you hear. You must be very much careful of, of, of that because they say those who love these ways, they, they will eat the fruits thereof. I must be very honest. It's important for you to be careful about ways. Words can make you or break you, like I said. Many people are still struggling with the poison of words in their lives. You know, like I told you how I struggled up to when I went to college and uh, up to, I was almost finishing in college when at least by the grace of God, I received the Lord Jesus Christ and he set me free. It took the grace of God, it took the power of God to set me free from words that were said even casually. Like I said, my mom loved me so much. She didn't mean to break me. She didn't mean to destroy me. But you know what? Words are carriers. They carry stuff in them and they can land into your life and just change you. You know, they can just turn your life around. Now, let's look at words from other people. Words from other people also are poison. You know, they are, they are poison. And uh, people can administer this poison to you, you know. And uh, it might be, it, it can be people that you respect the most, like your parents, your partner, you know. Uh, these people can really inject you or, or administer such poison to you. Casually so, like I'm, I'm saying with my mom. She administered it casually. She did not know how this thing was really working on me, how this thing really was bending me or, or destroying me and taking away my self-esteem. Words are spoken to you, or words that are spoken to you, you know, can even shrink you. Can shrink you to understand that even when you walk, you know, have you ever had somebody say, you know what, after that I felt like I'm naked. Because somebody spoke words and make you feel so naked, make you feel so bad. If, if you are on your way to work and you're using common transport, they say something that makes you even have it hard just to travel with your, your colleagues. Why? Because that thing so crushed you so much. Words, friends, are very dangerous. And words can corrupt the heart, can destroy the heart. Not dealt with, they sink and they go to the heart and they destroy the heart and guess what out of the heart then you're going to live your life there's going to be that outflow you become what your words declares or what other people's words declares but how do i keep myself from this poison of words 
You can keep yourself first by knowing the truth about words. You know, uh, that's why the, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The moment you know that words are not casual, words are containers, they carry life and death. Words are not come just for sweet. Words has an objective and that objective can just be to destroy my life. Once you know that, then you are awake. And that is the first step to help you in dealing with words. Number two, don't receive or accept words that are poisonous. It might be from your husband or your wife. It might be from your father or your mother. Don't receive those words. Reject them immediately. Don't waste time. Just reject them immediately and push them away. And somebody say, how do I reject them? Okay. You reject them by quickly saying in yourself, even if you're not answering that person, if they are saying you're good for nothing, you, you quickly reject those words and say, that's not me. And then you replace them by good ways, like saying, you know what? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm God's image and God's likeness. I'm, I, I, I'm not a good for nothing thing. When you do that and you speak it out, you know what? You have just uh, uh, spewed that poison. You have just uh, taken out that poison. That poison. Don't even stop and reason because people do not know. When you stop and reason and think and say, but why? Why is he saying that about me? Why can she say that about me? You know what you are doing? You are meditating. And when you are meditating, you know what? That thing is sinking. You are absorbing it. So you don't even have to think. You have to reject it so that... And why, Why? of course, why do you have to even meditate? Why do you have even to ask questions? Are you exactly what they said? No, you are not. So you don't have to think about it. Push it out immediately and then speak ways that protects you you know that protects that covers you you are protecting your heart because if you think about it yeah the whole day you think but how can you say that to me you are meditating and by meditating on that thing you know what it's getting in it's sinking and before long it it's either you tell yourself tomorrow i'm going to deal with him or now it's can you see now now from the heart you who were a very good person you are becoming like that bad person. Like we always say, don't wrestle with a, a, a pig in the mud. Because even when you finish wrestling, even if you win the wrestling, but the pig will be happy. But you will come out there and everybody will be surprised of you. So reject and push those words out and replace them immediately. Some people worry so much, not realizing that uh, actually they are meditating. <laughs> Don't worry about what people said. No, you don't have to worry. They are not talking about you. So please push it back and deal with it immediately and when you do that you are protecting yourself and you will realize that before the end of the day you shall have forgotten but if you reason and think why is he saying this about me why 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 you are meditating you it won't leave you even when you go to bed you will think about that and then of course if i may ask a question how many of us when a fly sits on your lips you stop and think but this fly of all the places sitting on my lips you don't do that you go you, you can even smack yourself just to chase a fly so it is with words that are not yours that do not define you don't wait don't reason don't talk why is it no when a fly sits on your foot you don't say look at this fly look at it no you quickly and sometimes you even take food food you know that thing is just tiny but you will take a lot of food from that place and throw it away you don't want a trace of that fly so why do you take time with words that are destroying you and allow them to sink into your heart, pollute and corrupt your heart so that the next time you stand up, the next time you open your mouth, have you ever heard people saying, ah, people are the same or men are the same, women are the same, these people are, it's because their hearts are now corrupted. Family, I hope you got something and I trust that, um, you, 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 you are encouraged by this word. And I just want to take this time and appreciate all men of God, servants of God that are watching and MTW family. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate your support. And I want to say to us, family, even before we, we pray, you know what? Before I even forget, because after praying, I might forget. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to bury my sister-in-law. So I will not be with you on Joy Comes in the Morning. But guess what? Pastor Joylin will be with us on Joy Comes in the Morning. So please tell friends, MTW family, tell friends that Pastor Joy, Joylin will be with us on Joy Comes in the Morning. And I will join you late in the evening. But now, I want to pray with you. You know what? Having seen that, what the heart is and how to keep the heart. We are going to talk about the rest, but how to keep your heart with all diligence 
I want to pray with you because some of you already you are sick. Some of you already are broken. Some of you already, what comes out of you is not you. You even say, this is not me. I don't know what, this is not me. That's not you. You are right. I want to pray with you and may God help you. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I thank you for your way. For your word, it is life to those who receive it and it is made the same even to our flesh. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you said in your word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and God, I break every word, I break every spirit, I break every power of darkness that found itself into this, uh, my brother, my sister's heart, as they meditated on it. And Father, I pray, set them free, loose them by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I thank you, Father, for your healing, for your deliverance. I thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, we take this time before you, Lord, and say thank you, Lord, for our president. Thank Thank you for our cabinet. Thank you, Lord, for our government. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for influencing their decisions, influencing their ideas so that uh, they, they work uh, for the safety and the protection of um, the, your people, my Lord and God. We pray your blessings upon our leaders. We pray your protection upon them, my Lord and God, even, even as they go up and down day and night, even as they hold meetings, my Lord and God, be with them, guide, lead by your spirit in the name of Jesus. We pray now, Lord, for our doctors, for our nurses, for all our cleaners, all those people in hospitals and those in mobile clinics that are going around testing and screening our people. Father, we pray for them. We speak divine protection upon their lives and upon their families in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for South Africa. Lord God Almighty, give us a breakthrough as we stand together that we may be able to strangle this virus in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, Lord, for Africa in Jesus' name as we stand together as a continent. My Lord and God, we have seen your grace in the beginning. We have seen, we have seen your grace even now and we say lord your mercies in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth we pray lord for our world in the name of jesus the heart hid countries my lord and god have mercy on your people be gracious to your people my lord and god and hear the prayers of your church hear the prayers of your people my lord and god day and night as we cry out to you my father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and lord god almighty remember your mercies remember lord your grace and we thank you father and trust that you hear our prayers to answer us lord in jesus mighty name we thank you and we bless you our god amen and amen friends just want to say sorry for taking a little bit longer but thank you so very much and remember stay at home wash your hands with soap sanitize use your mask social distance and may god help you even as you keep yourself safe, you're keeping your family safe. And then as you keep your family safe, you're keeping South Africa safe. And God bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Have a great and an awesome evening. And remember to share this message. And thank you for hosting all those, host, those, those watch parties. Thank you, men of God, for your support. Thank you for the messages that you send us. Thank you for the testimonies that you give you. You're sending to us. We're getting encouraged to keep on keeping on. It's peace in the midst of that storm. No matter how long the, 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 the lockdown is, we will be together. And God will give us the grace and the strength to soldier on. Thank you so very much. And God bless you richly. <laughs>